This at CES last year, we were calling it MobiSX, it was just a code name, and um, we launched it officially at Computex uh, in Taiwan this year. Basically what this is, is this is wireless USB flash storage. So we're, you're able to load content via USB, it's battery powered, it has a wireless in, and two wireless in antennas inside of it, and it comes in 16 and 32 gigabytes, and soon 64 gigs. The idea is, if you've got a device like, um, like an iPad like this, or a Kindle Fire with no ports on it for expansion, mm -hmm. you buy a 16 gig iPad Wi-Fi version and you think, uh-oh, I filled it up with movies, what am I going to do on my 18 hour flight to Australia, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> so you take your uh, wide drive and what's cool about the wide drive is you can stream up to three users at once, right? So three different um, devices, either it's iOS or Android based, can watch different high definition movies at the same time. Because it's got a second antenna in it, you can also reconnect um, to the internet. If you're at a, a Wi-Fi hotspot and you want to get back your internet access, you can do that as well. Basically how it works, power on the device, takes about 20 seconds or so for, uh, for it to uh, start up the antennas. So there's a battery and then we have a communication array and then a flash storage device. Mm -hmm. So we're not the first to hit the market. Uh, there was a competitor who beat us um, before Computex, um, but theirs is not solid state, right? Oh, Ours has no moving parts. Mm -hmm. um, theirs is really cool though, theirs has lots of, of capacity on it, uh, but ours is really small, about the size of an iPhone, right? Yeah, stick it in your pocket. You stick know. it in your pocket, um, it's very light. Yeah. So, yeah. Hold that right there. Yeah, definitely. What's the battery life on these with that? Is Four the hours with constant streaming, yeah. um, with three users, uh, six to eight yeah. hours or so on standby. So it's, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad, that's a couple movies. Sure, yeah. it's got you know about a 30 foot range, you know, any more than that would drain the, the battery life on yeah. it. Okay, so what I would do with my um, iPad is I first connect, go into the settings, uh, connect to the Y drive. Here I've named it Y drive mic. All right, so that's, that's connecting. We'll then um, toggle back out and we'll open the Y drive app. Now, the Y drive app you can download. Uh, from the um, iTunes store. For um, the uh, Kindle, you get that from the, for the Kindle Fire on Amazon Marketplace. It's right now in beta. It will be released soon um, as a full-fledged app, but you can still get it and evaluate it. Our Android app, however, is uh, also still in beta, and the reason for that, let me get back to the home screen here, uh, is because the Android tablets um, are very different. While they're all running the same operating system, um, uh, how they implement it, how they implement them is a little bit different. Um, how they render video and things like that. So we've run into a few glitchy uh, problems uh, between the different providers. So we're working on finding a solution for that before we do the full release of the app. But basically, once you open the app, um, you have access to the Y drive. So let me access the Y drive there, and then any of the content um, or files that I've dropped onto the device, I can access. So here's a bunch of movies. Let me tap on a high def movie right there. Okay. Takes a second or so here to buffer, but once it's uh, buffered, you can skip along in a movie anywhere you like, no problem. Maximize it like so. And this is a full HD. That's, a, no that's an HD. Though. Yeah, I mean, it's whatever the iPad is able to support, yeah. right? Yeah. We're using the video um, engine of the iPad itself. Uh, for music, however, we use the engine inside uh, the Y drive. So this is something we're actually looking to possibly change, is implement a video rendering engine inside the um, the with the Y drive um, to deal with the Android issue that we're having. Okay. So you can uh, listen to music, you can go back, you know, and do other things on your iPad and still continue to listen to music or access things like the internet. Another cool thing, we've added a new feature. Let's say if you want to um, copy some files. Let's see, I've got some music sync songs here. We've updated the app, so a little slide brings up an action button. You can then mail um, files or copy that file 
to your local storage. Now the local storage, of course, then goes on to the memory of the iPad, and then I can access it using the app later on. This was ideal when I jumped on the plane, couldn't access my, my uh, Wi-Fi, I couldn't turn my Y drive on, certain airlines, right? So uh, I copied all my important data locally and accessed it and, and studied for uh, CES. Okay. So we're looking to add some new features to uh, Y Drive this year. We're very committed to this product line. One of the features we're looking to add will be um, we're testing AirPlay compatibility, right? Um, we're also looking to expand the product line for Y Drive. So look for some new Y Drive models coming out this year um, with some new features, some things you're not going to see on the market today. Um, we're uh, pretty excited about it. Wish I could tell you more, but uh, <laughs> we learned that lesson the hard way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>